Hey everyone, Matthew here with FreePrescriptionLenses.com and I have someone who emailed me and they want transition lenses and anti-glare coating for their Ray-Ban 1531. Of course they have color, of course that frame retails for $100, but they have color code 5239, or I'm sorry, 3529, which is the black crystal. But I'm going to demonstrate today on the color code 3592, which is the what they call top red on opaline red that is this frame here but I'm gonna go ahead and cut it for his code 3529 and get them shipped out to you but I can cut transition lenses with anti-glare coating for any frame you had I happen to have this one on the shelf so I'm gonna use this color as an example but let's go ahead and get started let me just check one email right here real quick more videos ready to be published on YouTube. Okay, I'm gonna set everything down and let's go to work. I'm gonna take out the original demo lenses, and set them on the counter, and I'm gonna put this Ray-Ban frame into my $30,000 Santanelli. This is the LE1000, and the stylus has popped up and it's gonna trace the shape of the right lens, then it's gonna move over and trace the shape of the left. Here at freeprescriptionlenses.com, where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed with quality. You buy a genuine authentic frame and you will receive free, clear, single vision prescription lenses or non-prescription fashion lenses. Of course, this frame retails for $100, so if you bought, paid me $100, you'd be wearing this frame with your prescription in it. Of course, these are going to be non-prescription fashion lenses because that's what they want. But I'm going to go ahead and pull the shape up onto the computer. If these were prescription, I'd put in the pupillary distance, but this is, I'm just going to have it match the frames. These are polycarbonate lenses that I'm going to cut on the soft cycle due to the anti-glare coating. And this is a Xyle frame, which is just an old school name for plastic. So, I'm going to take the lenses out of the protective sleeves that they come in, set them down, and I'm going to put, this is called a block, or as I like to call it, a jenny from the block, but this needs to be attached to the lens for while it's cutting in the machine, so I need a double-sided adhesive sticker, and 3M, the same people who make post-it notes, make double-sided stickers. The black side is the sticky side. I'm going to stick that onto the block, pull the tape away, and then attach this to the front of the lens right in the middle. Let me do the same thing now for the other lens. Let me get a block, put the sticker on there, pull the tape away to make my side sticky, and then stick that onto the lens. Now because of the anti-glare coating that's on this lens, I actually want to use one more sticker on the back because these lenses can be slippery when they're cutting, and I just want to have one more sticker so it really grips well inside the machine. So I'm going to take your lens, put it into the chuck, hit the chuck button, it closes, hit start, and the first thing that's going to happen is these calipers, me and my PD stick, these calipers are going to come down and they're going to trace the shape of the right side of the frame, whatever frame that you want me to cut for, starting with the rear surface, the back surface closest to your eyelashes, which is the concave side of the lens, and then it's going to move forward and trace the convex front surface of the lens. Now if these were prescription, this is the reason why it traces both sides, it's measuring the thickness of the lens as it goes around to know exactly where to place the bevel so it'll best fit inside the frame. Now these are non-prescription so they're thin, but the cutting wheel is down here on the bottom left. That's what's going to grind away the lens material in this wheel in the center with that channel, that valley. That's what's going to cut the bevel onto the lens so it stays inside the frame. I will have to close the door, but for now I just want you to see as this lens touches down on the cutting wheel. So if I have the frame in stock, I can cut lenses for just about any frame you want and I have access to just about every frame from Ray-Ban, Polo, Gucci, Prada, Versace, Coach and many, many more. As long as you tell me the size that you want, they have size 48, so that's why I'm using this one as a template. This frame does come in two sizes, so just make sure you get me the right size, the model number and the correct size and I can ship any lens right to your home. And then later on in this video, I'm going to show you how to pop them in. Now these lenses are made out of polycarbonate. Polycarb is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. They are virtually unbreakable. They are bulletproof up to 22 caliber and have both UVA and UVB protection built into them. We know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin, where your eyes, 
are eight times more sensitive than your skin, so you have permanent sunscreen for your eyes with these. Now, the photochromatic gray just means they will turn gray in color. Now, the anti-glare coating, that coating is three features in one. It is designed to eliminate glare when driving at night, particularly driving at night in the rain, but from street lights, stop lights, computer screens, overhead, fluorescent lights. Now, the second feature, it's an anti-reflection lens. You can see how the fluorescent lights reflect off of this lens without that coating. So it makes for better eye contact. So when someone's looking at you, they're not looking at their reflection in your glasses. Or if someone takes a picture with a flash, you don't see the flash lit up in the lens. They see just your eyes. Now the third feature that I like, the practical side, is it comes with the best scratch protection in the business. This anti-glare coating, it takes a million dollar machine 24 hours to apply seven layers that make up the anti-glare coating. So they want to put the best scratch protection they can to protect that coating. So it's actually getting the bevel being put on the center wheel. And if you notice, there's water running in the background, but polycarbonate lenses cut dry where plastic and high index cut wet. Now for the last 20 seconds of the cutting cycle, there's two water jets that just like that. One in the front and one here in the rear. And they're just washing away any optical sawdust, essentially that may be on the lens. And as soon as the lens is done cutting, I'll take it out and we'll get it mounted into the frame. <coughs> now I just wanted to stay and get this cut because Labor Day holiday, Labor Weekend is starting and I want to get everything shipped so everyone's enjoying their holiday. So can I. So, what I want to do is dry your lens off, and just like me as I joke, your lens still has rough edges. So I'm going to use my handstone to smooth those out. Now my handstone is completely flat, I can put my finger on it while it's running and my finger gets warm due to the friction, but it's that friction that allows me to apply what's known as the safety bevel. But essentially all I've done is melted those rough edges, this white powdery substance you see me scraping off is called Schwarf. And I do this so much that I've worn a V-shaped bevel into my thumbnail from scraping lenses all day long. And once the schwarf is off your lens, I very carefully and very professionally collect it into one pile and then I wipe it on the floor. So let's see if the lens fits into your frame. I'm going to tuck it in and this is how you're going to mount your lenses. Hold the frame upright where the temples are pointing down towards the ground. I have the right side that I'm working on closest to me. I'm not trying to reach over the frame to do any of the work. So I have the frame is perpendicular to me. I'm going to tuck it in at the outside corner first and then using my thumbs I press down at the nose and it's still a little bit of give so I want to pop it back out and I'm going to take it down. Let's see. Let's do about two tenths of a millimeter. Now hit retouch. Now it's going to skip the cutting wheel and go straight to the bevel wheel. Now, two tenths of a millimeter. To all my American friends who have no idea what a millimeter is, it is the distance between my thumbnails. I'm going to take two tenths of that distance, one fifth of that distance off the circumference of the lens. So it'll make it easier for a novice to be able to pop them in. They're still going to stay inside the frame. You don't have to worry about that. But I just don't want you to force it into the frame or stretch the frame. And I'll also show you, should you have lenses in your frame, I'll show you how to remove those so that you can put these in. And then once they're both in, I'm going to show you the lenses darkening, just to verify that these are transition lenses before shipping. And while this is doing that, let me get your protective sleeves ready that I will ship in. Of course, free shipping anywhere in the United States. But this is Ray-Ban 1531. So this is RB1531, size 48. And these lenses just happen to have transitions gray. There's an R in gray with an anti-reflective coating, which is another name for anti-glare. So let's take the lens out. 
going to dry everything off very quickly back to the handstone for the safety bevel real quickly scrape all that off the edge of your lens and then wipe it on the floor because some things never change so let's go ahead and get this tucked into your frame and make sure it's going to fit this time again i have the frame perpendicular perpendicular to me the empty side that i'm working on closest to me i tuck it in on the side that is closest to me then using the thumbs i press down and it snaps right in so let's go ahead and do the same thing for your left lens i'm going to flip that over to l which simply means not right that's what l stands for you know you're not believing any of this are you okay so just like before these calipers are going to come down and they're going to trace the shape of the left side of the frame this time the not right side of the frame to make sure this lens is large enough always starting with the rear surface and then moving over and tracing the front surface again if these were very strong prescription lenses which would be free with the purchase of this frame it will just make sure that the lenses fit in there just as nicely as a very thin pair of lenses like the, the non-prescription ones that these are and as soon as this left lens starts cutting i'll continue to work on the right lens so i can go ahead and remove this block it is no longer needed pull the sticker off look it's stuck to the back of my finger pull that sticker off throw that in the trash can go ahead and pull this blue sticker off and the hydrophobic surface which means water hating that the anti-glare coating does the nice thing about that is you never need a liquid cleaner again for your lenses if you still have your ray-ban cleaning cloth which comes with this frame of course i'm going to provide you with one of my own premium microfiber cleaning cloths that's all you will ever need to use to clean your lenses because should you use any water hydrophobic is just like when you wax your car and it rains the water beats right off any liquid is going to do the same thing to your lens so it's just not going to stay on to there so i'm going to dry everything off because i will give these a much better cleaning at the very end I want to use some optical grade acetone to remove any sticker residue that may happen to still be on the lenses. Now if you notice your lens is completely flat all the way around, just like a nickel, I could take it out of the machine and it would stand up on its own now. Of course all that's going to change when the knife-like bevel is applied in that little channel right there. Now, in order to remove any lens that you may have in the frame, I do just the opposite. I mounted it with the frame turned upright. To remove the lenses, you will actually turn the frame over where the temples are pointed up to the sky. And I'm right-handed, so I grab the frame with my left hand. You're always going to push down with your thumb at the nose. So place your thumb at the nose. I grab the lens by the other side so it doesn't fall on the floor. But with my frame here and you can actually torque your frame just a little bit you're not going to hurt the frame by doing this but put your thumb on the on top of the other thumb and just push downward out comes the lens these are unbreakable bulletproof lenses so you never have to worry about harming your lens and again to mount these you turn the lenses back upright or the frame back upright and the side you're working on have it closest to me in a moment when i mount your left lens you'll see me holding it like this but to do the right lens I have it closest to me you tuck it in at the outside corner first and then use your thumbs you're always going to press down with your thumbs and then just as i mentioned press down it snaps right in the only time i would express any caution doing this in a plastic frame is if it's winter time and you live somewhere it's very cold these have been in your car overnight or these are nearly a freezing temperature plastic does become brittle so make sure it's at room temperature when you do this. The reason I push down at the nose, the thickest part of the frame is right here to absorb any impact. Although you can develop your own technique. Some people like to pull down on the bottom of the frame to get the lens out. Some people actually like to push it in at the nose first. I've gotten email saying this is how people like to do it, which is fine. You'll develop your own technique. Some people push it in there first and then push down here. Whatever, excuse me, excuse me whatever works best for you is what i'm trying to say when i'm not hiccuping so dry your lens off back to the handstone real quick to apply the safety bevel 
back to using my thumbnail to scrape off all the schwar from your lens and you know what's coming once it's all off your lens that's right wipe it on the floor because the clown gets to have fun while he's at work too you know so let's go ahead and get this mounted so now I have the empty side closest to me I tuck it in at the outside corner first and then using my thumbs I push down at the nose and it snaps right in I can go ahead and take this block off now if I'm strong enough and I am so I'm gonna pull that sticker off put the block down let's remove the back surface sticker I want to use some optical Oop, look that's still stuck on there come on fall off I'm gonna use some optical grade acetone which is $40 for this little bottle but it's only sold to optical shops and there's not that many shops worldwide so that's why it costs so much so that's all off of your lenses I'm gonna go ahead and dry everything off so there's no water on there to affect the ultraviolet rays that I'm about to pass through these lenses this is what your non-prescription lenses look like while they're still clear I'm gonna go ahead and expose them to a strong burst of ultraviolet protect I mean ultraviolet rays and my little transitions box that they provide me with so you might not have seen it that's the transitions so I'm gonna turn it on now all transition lenses take about 30 to 45 seconds to darken when you go outside it takes a little bit longer when you come back inside it takes about 45 seconds to a minute to 115 to actually return back to clear now this is important everyone pay attention all transition lenses will turn dark on day one as you are seeing give them two weeks they're going to continue to darken every day for the first two weeks providing that every day they're exposed to the sun after that they will work for years with no problem and the only time they will not work is if you're behind the windshield in a traditional car your windshield absorbs all the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays so your dashboard doesn't crack from sitting in the sun that's why transitions don't work in a car now if you have a convertible or a motorcycle yes the other thing with transition lenses they are temperature sensitive meaning that when it's 90 degrees and above they just Fahrenheit they just don't get as dark as they do when it's 90 and below the reason for that is when it's 97 98 degrees you're miserable your glasses are miserable no one wants to work 100 percent when it's 100 degrees outside so this is the first time they've been darkened they're going to continue to darken every day for the first two weeks but that's it i'm going to pop the lenses out and get these ready for shipping if anyone has any questions just email me at free prescription lenses at gmail.com and hopefully you enjoyed watching me as i cut transition lenses with an anti-glare coating where's the other one here it is here it is it's a pair put these in here and everyone has got the chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses thank you by the way every lens gets shipped in a padded envelope so I've shipped hundreds if not thousands of lenses and I've never had one damaged of course these are unbreakable lenses but they don't get scratched while they're in these protective sleeves now everyone has seen how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.